everyone. This is six. So I wrote a book. <laughs> Hi everyone. This is six. Uh, so I wrote a new book. It's called Field Guide: Love and Other Natural Disasters. Sup, nerds. Field Guide, Love and Other Natural Disasters is the latest from Six to Los Reyes in the Talking Nerdy series. She's a marine biologist. He's a journalist. Join Phil and Dacula on their adventure in the high seas and high landy. Saving the earth means no time for love. But what's a sustainable future without someone to share it with? Field Guide, Love and Other Natural Disasters by Six de los Reyes. Sneaking Quekwek and Instant Pancit Canton out of the galley and up to the observation deck was not the excitement Dax thought he had come on board for, but it was topping his list of highlights of all time. This, sitting on the floor and looking up at the night sky and listening to the rush of the ocean was on his list too. It was Phil. It was the way she seized him in a ferocious burst of energy. She was intelligent, of course. Dax expected no less. Sharp, almost abrasive. She would have to be to thrive on the field. But Phil was soft too. Delicate, in ways he couldn't have predicted. His eyes followed the gentle curve of her back as she rested the weight of her body over one knee pulled up to her chest. Phil was beautiful. Easy to overlook that detail when she came at you at full gale force and without warning. But there she was anyway. Her sun-kissed cheeks and sea-soaked lips. Tonight her hair was out of its usual top knot and left unbound for the ends to tickle her jawline. Last piece of quick quick, she said, throwing the words down like a challenge. You say that like it's the worst possible scenario. Dax leaned back on his hands and stretched his legs in front of him. He had a feeling that if he were to offer the last piece to her, she would take it crossly, and they would be back to square one. You know, it could be worse. I mean, you could be on this thing with an ex-girlfriend. Oh, so we're playing that game. The way she said it prompted him to ask, Are you here with an ex-boyfriend? It wasn't a line of inquiry he was used to pursuing, but it would be a waste to let the opportunity pass when Phil was willing to answer. Phil tossed her head, gesturing vaguely toward the crew quarters. Ex-girlfriend. Oh. Did he somehow read the situation wrong? At, at some level, he had thought he was engaged in a mild flirting situation, but now it seemed he had totally misread the atmosphere. Okay. I see. Actually, you know what? Phil continued, seemingly oblivious to his confusion. You know what's worse? You're on a cruise with both your ex-girlfriend and your ex-boyfriend, and they're together together, you know? That's the worst, I think. I'm sorry that didn't work out for you. It's cool. We're okay. I think. It was just awkward because we're both here. Mm, so, are you, like, attached or something? Girlfriend, 
boyfriend, sentient outgrowth, parasitic brainworm. He shook his head with a laugh. How do people even meet people in that context is what I constantly ask myself. <laughs> Phil chuckled under her breath. So what's your excuse? I have no time. She scoffed. That's everyone's excuse. What's your excuse? Phil rolled her shoulder. I am busy restoring and rehabilitating the coral reefs. Dax laughed despite himself. So you're saying you have no time. <laughs> he searched for any telltale signs of her frustration. A subtle set of her eyes or tension on her shoulders or any breaks in her armor. But there was nothing of the sort because Phil was completely open to him. Open like the ocean that spread out all around them. 90% of our real life lived on less than a tenth of the world's oceans, and Dax wondered if the same was reflected in Phil. That she, too, was a lonely ocean, mostly out of sight. He chose his words carefully and delivered them with levity. What is work-life balance? It sounds like a myth. Phil laughed, though he heard a tinge of bitterness in it. The sentiment was more apparent in the easy frown that came immediately after. Apparently it's a thing because you're supposed to make a distinction between who you are and what you do. Like, I science hard, but science is just what I do. It's not who I am. What's wrong with science being who you are? She shrugged. Apparently, and I say this with anecdotal evidence from several second-hand sources, when science is who you are, it doesn't leave much space for anything else. Sometimes I ask, is it worth it? We all die in the end anyway. Despite the words, her tone was light and teasing. That's a bleak way of looking at things, his head tilted. He could only stare. Doing what you love always had its consequences. And when what you love was hand in hand with trying to change the world, you risk losing yourself in the process. Science can't hurt you. Science can't hurt you, she parroted back at him. Science is a full contact sport. You need permits to science, licenses to carry, certifications, dedication of pretty much your entire life, and maybe two or three of your offspring. You're talking about the system, not science. So we fight the system? Dak's eyes dipped down to Phil's mouth, and heat brisk behind his ears. It's always a fight with you. It was funny the way the universe worked. Because even though he and Phil went to the same university, granted he was five years ahead, worked in the same city in adjacent fields, he still found himself asking, Where have you been all my life? Phil sighed and uncurled herself from her position to lay on the floor next to him. All I know is people protect what they love. Cousteau said that. And if I can make them love the ocean somehow, then maybe they'll come up in arms in the ocean's defense. Less because the ocean needs saving. It really doesn't. But more because we all live here. If we let the ocean die, we die along with it. Wow, I have a lot of angst. Good thing it's your job to make the climate crisis sexy. That means I can take it easy sometimes. <laughs> That's what it means, right? Phil's warm eyes gazed up at him and her lips parted to suck in a breath. I, I don't know about sexy, but I try. The epiphany came to him, unbidden. Dax wanted to know her. He wanted to know everything about Phil. Her head lulled to the side. The words were gentle, almost laughing. I talk too much, I know. It was an apology, which made the admission even better. I don't talk enough anyway, he answered, which was an advantage because he could listen to her stories all night. Yeah, but I'm, I'm sure you've been to more interesting places than I have, more important things to talk about. Maybe. Bax lowered himself on one elbow, closing the gap between them by a magnitude of breaths. His eyes lingered where her tongue darted out to moisten her lips. She scrunched her face at him. I'm going to figure you out one of these days. I have like five days left before we dock. Dax had no doubt. 
Phil would spread him open and study him like she would a map of the ocean floor. The image in his head was startling in its clarity. Phil bent over him, her long, slender fingers tracing the planes and ridges of his body, discovering secret places and unsaid yearnings. If you're going to kiss me, she said in a sound that was barely a whisper, just do it already. So he did. Field Guide Love and Other Natural Disasters by Six de los Reyes.